Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's revisiting time. One of the most infamous Nostalgia Critic react or Nostalgia Critic reviews, uh, his Cat in a Hat, uh, his Cat in a Hat video. Um, from what I understand, it had to be edited several times in order for it to be up on YouTube. And now he was finally able to post the original in its entirety, so here we are. So, who here remembers the Cat in the Hat movie with Mike Myers back in the day? No, it exists. Be grateful you did not have to sit through it and watch it. Dirty <laughs> You, you dirty <laughs> bad. I, you had me there for a moment. Uh, that's like a clip I've seen from it. I've never watched. It. Okay, okay. I was about to say is like, <laughs> dude, you had me fooled there, hundred percent. I was like, oh damn, he has seen it. But this film, I saw it when I was about fourteen. I have never wanted to leave a movie theater more than when I was watching this, and that's saying something. Because here's the other thing, too. We went and we watched this because my little sisters were fans of Dr. Seuss. They loved the Cat in the Hat books. This right for them? I don't know about that, but it <laughs> definitely ruined a lot of things for me. Because, keep in mind, this is when Mike Myers was still semi-relevant. And... And I think Doug talks about this in the review, but there was a time when Mike Myers was in everything. You know, he was in Austin Powers, Shrek. He was he he was like hosting stuff all over the place. He was he he killed as just like one of these amazing comedic actors of like the late '90s, early 2000s. Then something happened. Everyone caught on to what his shtick was. Everyone caught on to what his brand of comedy was and once they realized it it wasn't funny anymore that happens that does happen it's just like I can't watch a Steven Spielberg movie anymore without seeing the spotlight fetish thing that he has watch a Steven Spielberg film you know um, you know Jaws E.T. even modern ones like Meet the Fablemans and uh, Ready Player One the amount of spotlight fetish stuff like spotlights behind the characters whenever they're doing stuff. You know, blowing out the background of the scenery. Jurassic Park's real bad for it, too, especially in the intro. Oh, And, and here's the thing. It's, I'm not saying, like, they don't have their tricks and they don't pull them off great. But for me, this, this is hands down one of the worst films I've ever seen. How about you, Kate? What memories do you have of this film? <laughs> I was a kid when it came out, so like, you were older. Yeah. So for me, it's different. I'm an old man. We had it on VHS. I remember watching it at my granny's house before she passed away. So mm. like, it's it it's different for me. <laughs> Like watching it on a one of those uh, old CRTs, the big TVs that were in a box. It was like yeah, um, had wood built around it. Yeah. Um, and v VHS player. I remember those. They were basically like an all-in-one kind of thing. There were two uh, couches in that room. I mean, it's just different for me. But, I mean, you can have your opinion and you can say what you will about all that stuff. But, it's different. <laughs> I know you'll probably, you're, you, you'll look at it through rose-tinted glasses. And I, and I don't fault you for that. I, it's just, everyone experiences things differently. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, your opinion is not going to influence how I see the film. No, and I, and and I don't expect it to. I mean, I don't expect like, it to. So. Like, you can think however you want about it. You have fond memories of it because, you know, you made you were with family with those. Yeah. I was with my family when I watched this. 
And, and I'd you had be a on- terrible experience. And I'd be honest, I'd rather watch the Holocaust. <laughs> well, why are we watching it if you don't like it? Then? <laughs> because I want... Because... I have seen a version of this. That's mostly what we do with Nostalgia Critic. We watch them review stuff that's not considered good. Yes. Okay. And here's the thing. I have seen a version of this of this review, but not. I don't think I've seen this version. But I figured I would share it with you two because, oh my God. Well, let's see what Doug has to say. All right, Doug. I, I don't know what else to say, just do it. Oh yeah, it's an old intro. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, he actually did reviews of Mara Wilson back in the day, aka Matilda. Yeah. It was hilarious. <laughs> To be honest, I like that intro more. I do too. That was a critic guy, remember? My little pony. I used to wonder why friendship could be my little. We're gonna turn this video into another brony message board. Now sit down! <sighs> if you haven't noticed, I've been roped into babysitting this weekend all because I owe a certain someone a certain favor. Hey, Mr. Sabub, you almost done? Almost. I'm finalizing the plans for my next movie deal. Oh, God. That's what I get for trading my soul for a good Zod impression. So what do kids normally do? They make tofu or something? Well, you could read me a story. Yeah, okay. Okay, this Uh, one's a classic. We looked, then we saw him. Step in on the mat. We looked, and we saw him. The the cat in the hat. Wait, why does he look like a cat? Because he's a cat? No, that's not what he looks like. He's supposed to be scary and weird and constantly out of breath. What? And why is it all in rhyme? Well, because it's Dr. Seuss. Everything he does is in rhyme. No, he's only supposed to rhyme once in a while. And where's all the subplots and in-jokes and advertisements and forced morals and penis innuendos? What the fuck are you talking about? This isn't Dr. Seuss, it's not even close. It's evil corporate pandering with freaky imagery that's promoting everything that's wrong with humanity. This was next to Son of the Mask, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Who would think in any way this innocent little story would be connected to this big budget sellout? I want... Ah! Oh no, it's Peter Solis. Who? The Hollywood executive who bought all the film rights to Dr. Seuss. You call him the ass with the cash. I see you're young and impressionable too, so I have a jiggy load of crunk here for you. With modern jokes, adult jokes, and poop jokes galore. References kids won't get, who could ask for more? It's totally boss. And with the in crowd, is there any ponage this funkiness allows? Stop it! Stop it! Stop trying to sound cool! Is my hizzy in a nizzy? Look, you clearly have no idea how people talk, and you clearly have no idea what made Dr. Seuss a great author. I didn't realize all that what was the... in there. It's when you go back and you re- you see it as an adult, you you kind of... Mm. It, it's a lot like whenever I went back and I watched The Wizard, which I loved as a kid. Going back and watching it as an adult, I'm just like, I hate this movie. I hate it. I want it to die in a fire. What do you mean? I remember the snap thing, and uh, I remember like the house turning, you know, house into, like just... basically into like an amusement ride or whatever. What? Why are you laughing at me? I'm just saying that's what I remember. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. Oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, if I can take this chance to enlighten you on how Dr. Seuss is being butchered nowadays, maybe some good can come of this. What do you say, kiddo? You ready to take a trip into some awkward humor? With Mike Myers? Of course. <laughs> Let us journey into Dr. Seuss's The Cat in the Hat. 
It's important to note that the director of this movie is Bo Welch, a world-famous production desire on a lot of Tim Burton movies and Barry Sonnenfeld productions. I say this because clearly he's much better at directing the set than he is at directing his actors. Though, as you can see, even that can get a little extreme. I feel like I'm at the beginning of a Double Mint Gum commercial. Double, double your we see the mother works at a hand sanitizer factory, also known as Howie Mandel's Candy Store, where we see one of the many reoccurring themes in current Dr. Seuss productions, weak suburban commentary. Tonight is our bi-monthly meet and greet party. Tonight's host is Joan Walden. Joan, if your house is as messy as last time, So what level of not caring are our actors at in this movie? Uh, let's see, we've passed Dennis Hopper from Super Mario Brothers, uh, passed Russell Crowe from anything he's in, and we're right up to Jeremy Irons from Dungeons and Dragons. My kids will be on their best behavior. Great. We then see her two kids at home, played by Spencer Breslin and Dakota Fanning, who's best known for playing a strange-looking, lifeless puppet. Oh, and Coraline. They spend most of their time setting up their story arcs that will obviously be changed by our thankfully neutered protagonist. He's a messy troublemaker, she's a control freak, and neither of them put any emotion into their performances. This was all Sally's fault. I tried to tell him, Mom. Why don't you go upstairs? This is just as much my fault. I thought they always landed on their feet. I have to add this one to my list. This was my fault. Stephen Hawking's voice box emotes more than them. Why do I always have to do the opposite of what I'm supposed to? God, put some fucking emotion into it. <laughs> and speaking of actors who just gave up, Alec Baldwin plays the evil neighbor who wants to marry the mother and send her son Conrad off to military school. Why? I don't know. Something has to account for this uncomfortably forced conflict here, though. Maybe if you just behave, I wouldn't have to consider military school. I wish I could trust you. I wish I had a different mom. Well, sometimes I wish the same thing. How does the TV look so fuzzy? I think it's because they put a filter over it so that they could have the footage included. Huh. I have to do that sometimes with uh, some of our uh, show reactions. I was just wondering. Yeah. Okay. It's I can see so it too. Is, it's like a mosaic. It's like the start of Home Alone, but the mom's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> also, her line there. Make, made me laugh even when I was younger because what she says right here what he says right here I he, could trust you he says I wish I had a different mom well sometimes I wish the same thing you wish you had a different mom I mean it, yeah, she wishes he had a different mom so she didn't have to put up with him <laughs> yeah but as a, but when I was younger I was just like I was like wait a minute uh uh Okay, Solis, here's one of my big problems here. If you're going to show family dilemmas and conflicts, try actually showing it. The kid and mother snapping at each other, if you can even call it that, it's so unemotional, seems needlessly mean and unjustified. There's little to no build-up to such harshness being delivered from both of them. <sighs> well, we need to add some extra morals. Why? The one in the book is fine, as well as unique. Sometimes a little rule-breaking is okay as long as it never goes too far. That's a rare message for kids, and Seuss delivered it in a balanced way because the kids were normal kids. Here, the boy is already out of control, and the girl is the other extreme. So the message is already getting confused. Well, we needed to change it around for the longer running time. Polar Express kept the message focused with a longer running time. Mary Poppins kept the message focused with a longer running time. Why couldn't this? Oh, what good are those movies anyway? They don't even have pop cultural references. That, and we knew Mike Myers would only be funny for one more year, and we had to cash in on him as quickly as possible. Speaking of which... <laughs> Yes, it's just about that time, isn't it? After a pretty shockingly offensive stereotype comes to babysit, they start watching TV. Oh, yeah. oh. I wouldn't use Parliament. You tell them, quite Jung. No more big government. Okay, movie, that was like five racist jokes at a time. We're losing track about what qualities we're supposed to not like about them. Am I supposed to hate how they talk different or how they look different? As she falls asleep, uh, we finally get the mm -hmm. appearance of our geisha covered in pubes, Mike Myers. That could have gone better. 
Mr. Critic? Is that what happens when Pepe Le Pew makes Whoopi with Ronald McDonald? Yes. Oh. Yes, it is. I'm afraid. We all are. Now, what are we hiding from? <laughs> Now, for those who don't remember, there was a time when Mike Myers ruled the fucking world. He was a hit on Saturday Night Live, grew a cult following with Austin Powers, resulting in a monster hit with its sequel, landed another big hit with Shrek, killed as a host of the MTV Movie Awards, and I'm just gonna say it, he may not have been that funny. What? <laughs> Or at <laughs> least devil, not as like, funny huh? as we built him up to be. <laughs> he had some good characters, he had some good bits, and he seemed to have a likable personality. But after a while, people started to catch on to the repetition of his humor that, without proper support, couldn't keep everybody laughing for very long. And nowhere is that more painfully spotlighted than in this flick. Look at this scene where he has to keep you entertained for a good solid minute. What I'm minute. wondering if he's referring to is, is he referring to just Mike Myers and his characters? Or is he referring to like overall, like all of the stuff he's done? In terms of it, I would say probably the stuff where Mike Myers is like in the lead and he's like trying to, and he because, has just. To... I'm sorry, but like some of the scenes in Austin Powers, like, are still funny to me today. Like... No, no, and that's the thing. He's not saying that those are bad, but because he has a great supporting cast around him, mm. it's made even funnier. But in movies where he has the lead and it's just him and there's no one else that's driving the plot forward. For instance, Wayne's World. Who did Wayne have? Garth. Yeah. Always. Garth was by his side. And Dana Carvey and Mike Myers feeding off of each other. Awesome. They also had great bit characters with Ed O'Neill. They had great bit characters with like Chris Farley, Tia Carrere, and her, char and her character just... It all made it work. Here, Mike Myers is trying to have to like lead you through this, but unfortunately, because of him not having a good supporting cast around him, everything falls apart. And it's not the case in like the Most Austin Powers Most of my Power favorite movies. scenes from the Austin Power movies, like there's a couple of them I can think of that are still him, but like a lot of my favorite ones are not actually him. It's just the writing of the jokes, you know, like, Ron, it's Godzilla! And no, it isn't. I'm still alive. I'm just very, very injured. Yes. <laughs> but the bone is poking through the flesh. I'm it's going to try to, to stand smell a bit up. like almonds. Oh! Which is not good. <laughs> that was Will Ferrell. So. Yes. Will Ferrell playing. Gosh, Will Ferrell playing. And I know a lot of people dislike Will Ferrell, but I'm sorry. Will Ferrell's fucking funny. He can sometimes. be very funny. Uh, here, I I don't know. Uh, this was. This is when Mike Myers' shtick started to run its course and he never changed. But anyway. It just on his own. Why I'm the cat in the hat! There's no doubt about that. I'm a super fun difference feline who's here to make sure that you're feeling fine. Me lime. Key mm. lime. Burpin time. I got nothing. I'm not so good with the rhyming. Not really. No. Yeah, the cat in the hat, the most famous Dr. Seuss character of all time, is not good at rhyming. Starting to see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. His shtick seems to be acknowledging that what he's saying isn't funny. Which at first, is funny. But then you realize constantly acknowledging what he's saying isn't funny suddenly results in thinking what he's saying isn't funny. Where did you come from? My place! What do you think? <laughs> On top of that, he doesn't really have much of a character. I mean, I guess it's trying to be Bugs Bunny-ish, but he never really seems to care about what his motivation is or how to carry it out. He just seems more concerned about making bad jokes and winking to the camera than he does actually interacting with the kids. Half the time, he doesn't even look them in the face. Oh, but come on, critic! He has this laugh! <laughs> okay, that uh. doesn't create a three-dimensional character. What if he did it again? <laughs> Doing it again I, isn't gonna ch I guess it is different when you watch it later in life. Yeah.
change anything. What about again? <laughs> no. And again. No. And again. No. And again. 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 And again and I make a joke, and then I laugh at it immediately afterwards, I edit out myself laughing at my own joke. <laughs> like, I, I would edit that out just now, because I probably just laughed at myself. Like, no, I, I laugh at myself, too. But I I try to just hold it back as best I can. Honestly... It's kind of like a nervous thing for me. That's fair. Just part of my anxiety. It's like I just told a joke. <laughs> Hopefully, people don't think I'm lame. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you're fine, dude. Having him laugh again and again does not give him an identity. I mean, he's not as good as. What? Say it. Don't make me say it. Say what? Say Please it. don't. What were you going to say? I can't. What is it? Please don't make me say it. What is it? <sighs> He's not as good as Jim Carrey in The Grinch. Ah! Shut up. <laughs> it doesn't mean it was good, but Carrey had a clear character, an eccentric grump, and his face was expressive enough to work its way through all that makeup. Yeah, I'm sorry, I still Meyer disagree with him somewhat on The Grinch. What? Like, he's like, it doesn't mean that Carrey was good. No, Jim Carrey was good as The Grinch. I'm sorry. Well, he was good, but I think the I think material around him if it, if they would have stepped closer to what it was in the book... It might not have been a great movie, but he still killed the part. Oh, no. And you see, it, Doug appreciates that. Because the thing with... It, he, I think he actually talks about it here. You know, Jim Carrey's facial expressions are able to work their way through all this makeup. Because here's the thing. You put enough makeup on somebody, it's going to be so caked up, you can't even tell if they're smiling. Whereas here, you can always tell the emotion that Jim Carrey is feeling because he is so good at over-exaggerating his features. Yeah. And Mike Myers doesn't have that. He does not have as animated as a face as Jim Carrey. Anyway. Was expressive enough to work its way through all that makeup. Myers seems to have two expressions. Pedo smile and happy I shit my pants. On top of that, Carrey had enough energy to become one with the costume. He could work with it to show how fully animated his body could be. With Myers, it always looks like he's restrained by it, like he's fighting against it. Every time he's done with a take, it looks like he's gonna pass out on Dakota Fanning. Even the costume just looks like a cheap cutout you stick your face into, except it's being worn by one of the Wayans brothers from White Chicks. Oh. I don't necessarily blame Myers for this, it's just <coughs> it wasn't the right casting. And to be fair, how could anyone make a joke like this in a Dr. Seuss movie work? Humana, 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 humana. Who is this? <laughs> oh. That's my mom. Awkward. Yeah. Really soulless? A dick innuendo joke? Well, that was just to throw in a little dirty humor for the adults. Why do you need to insert dirty humor in a Dr. Seuss film? Well, if you want the answer, and I know that you do, here's Analyst 1 and Analyst 2. Oh, no. Hey, how come you keep going in and out of rhyming? It's pretty inconsistent. Well, it's our lazy way of connecting to the source material. <clears throat> oh, I, I mean, artistically, it seemed to make the most sense. You see, Critic, according to polls, or so we've been told, when kids hear adult jokes, it makes them feel old. They feel more grown up to be in on the gag. Once seen in the trailer, it's cash in the bag. The same goes for butt jokes and modern slang, too. It makes the crowds think we're on the same level as you. We talk the same lingo and reference pop culture. Yes, focus groups make us more profitable vultures. But Seuss got popular because he wrote what he wanted to see, not what focus groups want to see. Have you ever considered the possibility that maybe people don't know what's best for them? And by continually giving them the same crap, they'll never know what's different, so they'll just keep asking for the same crap? Well, the chart says... I'm not asking the charts, I'm asking you! Well, the chart says... You are everything that's wrong with entertainment! But the chart says... Oh! 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 Oh!
wonder if that's one of the parts they had to cut out of the original one. <laughs> oh my god. I, I think I remember that being in there. I can't remember though. It's been a long time. Yeah, corporate tools. Only useful whenever they have numbers in front of them. Who turned off the chart? Did you turn off the chart? I didn't turn off the chart! So the cat whips out a device called the Funometer, which you would think shows how phenomenally annoying he is, but instead restates what we already knew. You're a control freak and you're a rule breaker. That'll be $700. Who's your insurance carrier? Stop this right now! Uh -huh. Who said that? Me! Remember the fish? Actually, no, we don't remember, because this is the first time you've been introduced. Kind of late in the game to bring this character in out of nowhere, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. I need to keep a banana, become a mine! There was this cat that I knew back home where I was bred. He never listened to a single thing his mother said. He you know, I sometimes wonder if this is all just a really wacky episode of To Catch a Predator. Go have fun, fun, fun! Go insane and have some fun, fun, fun! Just look at me! No, I got it. I know what this is. This is one of those fake trailers before Tropic Thunder. The one that looks real but is so goddamn stupid it couldn't possibly exist. Except... <laughs> This one actually exists, and you should cry because of it. That's monstrous! This filthy thing? She was gonna wear that tonight, and you ruined it. Honey, it was ruined when she bought it. Yeah. You know, whenever I have too much hope, I'll just remember to play that scene to remind me that all is lost. All is lost. Wasn't that from something These, else, though? It was. It's. It was all over the place in the '90s, which yeah. is strange considering this movie came out in like the mid 2000s, which shows you how mm -hmm. dated that reference is. But yeah. I remember it being in uh, in in Living Color. It was like Damon Wayans and David Allen Greer. They were like it was like men on men on topics, and they were talking about fashion one time, and they were just like, and for this dress, we are gonna give you the. Look back, snap. Mm -hmm. Like it, and it was all over the place in the '90s. But I can't remember where it originally came from. These things will not bite you. They want to have fun. Oh. So without further ado, meet Thing Two and Thing One. <laughs> oh. mutate with Alfred E. Newman! Those are hideous! What? They look like the Dr. Seuss book. All right, first of all, when did you start following anything from the Dr. Seuss book? Second, what makes something cute in a drawing doesn't necessarily make it cute in real life. In drawing, you can get away with leaving certain things out, like upper lips, per se. They would look like wrinkles if you put them in a drawing, but in real life, it looks fucking scary. The reason Cindy Lou was the only cute character in The Grinch was because she was the only one who was allowed to have an upper lip. Everyone else looks like a demon-possessed hungry hungry hippo. And these two look like the Shining Girls and Bozo the Clown gave them Jaeger bombs. Ow. But, uh-oh, the dog gets away and they have to get it back. Time to die. Okay, you scared him away. Oopsie. Dirty hoe. <laughs> eight. That's eight times Dr. Seuss rolled in his grave. Ah, 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 ah. Cat, get down! They're gonna see you! Hi! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so they finally hanged him. That's nice. The hell? Yes, that actually happened. But And by the way, they had a sense of the song there. I remember it was like, I'm easy like Sunday morning. Hmm. And yeah, it was at this point, it, I remember this part of the review. I remember what happened with our first reaction. And honestly, I felt like doing the same. <sighs> <laughs> it's 
like they can't figure it out either. Yep. Contemplating what is life. Man. <laughs> what did I just witness? He's literally staring at the sun so it'll go blind so he never has to see anything like that again. <laughs> I could see that. Oh, boy. child it's just <laughs> that last scene what can somebody say to that i don't know i mean it doesn't make any sense at all when cat gets hit in the balls he's in a dress and on the swing with the unicorn i have nothing for it i have no jokes at all <laughs> have i lost my mind evelina could it be that i've lost my touch in making fun of scenes like this could it be that cat in the hat has broken me. I don't know, but my dad will kill you if he knows that you left me alone instead of babysitting. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I'll be back soon. Scene. Baldwin chases after them, but they escape through a kiosk where a party is going on. Yeah, but that's never explained. In fact, it's forgotten just as quickly as it's discovered. And they make their way back home. Here she is, the super luxurious omnidirectional whatchamajigger. S L O W? Yeah, slow. It's better than the last name we had. Super hydraulic instantaneous transporter. Oh, you mean it. No! <laughs> Quick to the slow! <laughs> Nine! That's nine times Dr. Seuss rolled in his grave. Ah, 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 ah. Only to discover that the cat's magic box has been left open and is spreading chaos everywhere. But let's be really honest, it's just trying to look like one of the Seuss attractions at Universal Studios. Don't believe me? They literally say it. This is amazing! It's like a ride in an amusement park! You mean like it? Universal Studios! <laughs> <Cha -ching. laughs> yes, you just saw that. He literally directly advertised to you Universal Studios. I don't think the entire running time of The Wizard is as big a sellout as that mere couple of seconds of Mike Myers winking. In fact, I think every Dr. Seuss movie can be summed up in that one gesture. Painfully obvious references? Chicken. Totally unneeded adult jokes? Chicken. Appealing desperately to the lowest common denominator the same way Michael Bay appeals to penises and Stephanie Meyer appeals to vaginas? Chicken. 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 In fact, why don't we just make this the new Dr. Seuss logo? Dr. Seuss. We've got to have money. Chicken. So they find the crate and finally close it. All's awful that ends awful. But wait, the place is still a mess. You need to get out. But I thought you two wanted to have fun today. Look around, Cat. You were right. It's fun to have fun, but you have to know how. And you don't know when enough is enough. Please. Out! Finally, the only justified moment in this film. I just wish it happened an hour and a half ago. But if you know the story, oh, let's face it, doesn't matter if you do, they follow it so rarely. The cat comes in and fixes everything. And it wouldn't be a shitty Dr. Seuss movie if we didn't have a shitty pop song for the soundtrack. And you're not gonna believe it, but they literally reference that selling point too. We even managed to work in an up-tempo pop tune for the soundtrack. That's important. Oh, for God's sake, Soulless! Why are you being so obvious with how evil you are? <laughs> well, it's hip writing fact number one. If you say you're doing something painful and stupid, it's immediately no longer painful and stupid. Oh, I see. Critic, I'm gonna hit you. Ow! 
You can't scream. It's no longer painful and stupid. Yes, it is. This whole movie is. Shut up. Even with its dumbass ending of Mom happily returning, Baldwin being dumb, and the party going great. But by having grown-up humor, we make it more adult. By modernizing the dialogue, we make it more timeless. And by changing the source material, we show how much we want to make it even better. No. Every single thing you said, you got back. By having grown-up humor, you make it more childish. By modernizing the dialogue, you make it more dated. And by changing the source material, you show how much you don't respect what's already perfect. I'm not gonna act like everything Seuss wrote was a masterpiece, but when he got it right, he got it right. They don't need to be updated. They don't need to be fixed. They don't even really need to have movies made about them. But if you're going to do it, the very least you can do is understand the source material. Well, of course I understand the source material. They're just simple kids' books. No, they're not just simple kids' books. They're stories that we are continuing to read even today. They're stories that we remember years later, even when other stories fade from our memory. They're stories we will never forget, and for good reason. They're stories that helped shape our childhoods through well-thought-out writing, imaginative drawings, and endearing morals. And the idea of this, shaping somebody's childhood, the fact that it even has the same name, just makes me sick to my stomach. Maybe these simple kids' books are far more adult than you give them credit for. And I guarantee that'll show when years later both children and adults will still be reading these simple kids' books. Well, pandering bullshit like this disappears out of people's consciousness, also for good reason. Good art doesn't come from focus groups and statistics. It comes from people who share how they see things in their own unique way. Critic, I think I like your book better than I like the movie. So do I, kiddo. So do I. No. No, you're wrong. You're all wrong. I'm going to show you all the Seuss movies until you appreciate them. Your dog by kissing. No! Horton hears a who with anime references. No! The Lorax with Taylor Swift and Zach Efron! No! Did somebody miss her daddy? How's my little? Hey, I know you. You're that executive that sold his soul to make those horrible Dr. Seuss movies. What? Oh, yeah. I rigged it so that each of them would be a hit. No person in their logical mind would willingly go see that shit. That almost rhymes. It's not true. It's simply not true. And now it's time to return the favor. What? Ah! Oh, hey, thank uh, God. I know it's not my place or anything, but uh, could I throw in a suggestion torture? Sure. What? You want me to do what with the fork? Buddy. I like the way you think. Oh, well, he gave me a lot to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Come, my little old spawn. Enjoy that book. Well, maybe there's some hope after all. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember. Hey! What are you doing with that fork? <laughs> well, others would like to forget. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow, I didn't remember that. <laughs> it's okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of movies that What year did that come out? 2003? I think. Hold on. The cat in the hat. Yep, 2003. So I guess that was also the origin story for Charlie. Oh my god. Satan's daughter. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. I can very well see it. Oh, uh, gosh. Also, it's so weird seeing Rachel in videos. Like, that's Rachel Ties. Uh, she was the original, like, lead female actress for the Nostalgia Critic for a while. And then she left because she got uh, offered a bunch of parts in uh, California. And then Tamara, the one that we know now, she stepped in as like her uh, her replacement, mm. 
And gosh, it is so weird looking back and seeing seeing uh, those three again. But anyway, yeah. So the Cat in the Hat definitely. I I really hope that in the future that we get another shot at the Cat in the Hat in terms of like a movie. Please make it animated. Please do it. Please do like CG, like what they did with The Grinch not too long ago. I would like that. I mean, to be honest, I've seen movies that are not seen movies, but seen reviews of movies that have made me cringe harder than that. Fair enough. It's not the worst thing ever. It It's, I don't know, man. For me, I just... I never was John able Tron to... John Tron in particular has shown us at least three films. Okay. Definitely worse than Okay, this. but here's the thing. Those films did not have a budget. Yeah, true. They're not major. This major film... Features. This film had, not joking, $109 million. Actually barely made it back to the box office, too. Oh, but you're not counting, like, how much, uh... How much, uh, the, um... Uh, how much it cost for uh, advertising. Mm-hmm. If you see a budget for $100 million, usually the advertising budget is the same as that, if not a bit more. Damn. So this movie lost money. Hmm. Uh, but just the fact that this cost $109 million to make and this is what we got. Uh, anyway. I guess... That's all that's all that needs to be said. Sorry, Kate. I did I I didn't know the cat in the hat was like was was a Well it came the, out the year like before my granny passed. Okay. And so that that had to be the year that we found out she had cancer. Mm. Uh and so I don't remember much of the movie, I just remember like the words on the TV screen and that one like snap thing that I was talking about. Yeah. And I didn't remember it being like that. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so I I don't really know what else to say about this about this movie except for try again and please put in some effort. But either way. That was The Cat in the Hat, original edit by the Nostalgia Critic. Uh, this was, like, uh, I, I got nothing else to say. Just We're just going to end it here and just say thank you for tuning in. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Be good people, everybody. Peace. <laughs>